right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another installment of Pre-AP Chemistry Lectures. This is Mr. Doolin. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at scientific notation, um, or aka the lazy scientist way to write big numbers. Um, so today, what we're going to do is we'll look at why it's necessary right off the bat that we start to write things in scientific notations when we're in chemistry especially because um, what we deal with is on the atomic scale and it's really really small so what I've got drawn before you is just a simple carbon molecule and what we're gonna look at specifically is this carbon to carbon bond length alright and so a carbon carbon bond is actually 109 picometers long Another way of saying that is it's 109 times 10 to the negative 12 meters, right? Or if we were going to write that out longhand, it would be 0 0.1234567 1099 I think that's right count should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep, that's what it looks like. And so I don't want to write that number out every time I want to write a carbon bond length. I actually want to write this number out or this. Remember, our metric prefixes are just a shorthand notation of scientific notation. So scientific notation shortens our number, right? Another thing that we want to do is we want to look at H2O model, like we all know water, right? So if I wanted to know how many H2O molecules are actually in a water bottle, it's going to be a, a big number for you here. See if I can copy it correctly here. I got one, six, seven, and then I've got one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so that would be six, and then I think I just go seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. All right, so that's how many water molecules are actually in a bottle of water. All right, I don't want to write that. I don't want to write that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and turn it into scientific notation, and I'll show you how to do this in just a second. But essentially, I'm going to go ahead and give you the, the answer here, 1.67 times 10 to the 25th which number is easier to write right and so you see scientific notation in chemistry really it's just a way to be lazy and write our numbers um, a lot faster okay so now what we're going to look at is how do we actually write scientific notation what are the rules that we're going to use and I'm just going to put sci notation here what are the rules for scientific notation essentially we've got some number which I'm going to represent with an a here times 10 to the n all right now a has to be between 1 and 9 and then remember from another lecture we talked about significant figures so we will use sig fig rules to determine how many decimal places to write here Right? Because we could write 1, or we could write 1.11, or we could write 1.1111, right? So we'll use sig figs, the number of sig figs that we need will determine what that number A actually is. All right? And then N is our integer, our, our exponent. It's going to tell us whether it's going to be a big number or a small number. If N is positive, right? It's when the overall number is larger than one. And we move the decimal to the right. All right? The other version of this is N, if it's negative, the overall number is smaller than one the the negative number there is telling us to move 
decimal to the left, all right? And so it's not crazy. And then how do I determine what, like, what n actually is? So n equals the number of times we need to move the actual decimal, all right? So it's the number of times I have to move the decimal. It'll be a positive number if I'm trying to move that, that number to make it bigger than one. It'll be a negative number if I'm trying to make it less than one, all right? Some, some of you have heard move it left, move it right. I don't really like that because um, when we give you a number and say turn it into scientific notation, you're actually moving it the opposite direction. So um, I like to think of it as, as my number larger than one is my number, number less than one um, tells me whether or not that exponent is going to be a positive integer or a negative integer. And then just the overall value of n is just how many times do I actually have to move the decimal. All right. Okay, well, that's it. And we'll practice putting some numbers into scientific notation in class. So hopefully if you have any questions, you've gotten them written down. Um, get your summary done, and I will see you in class.